Next Wave DV presents NAB 2013. Made possible by Zeiss. We make it visible. Kessler Crane. Innovative tools for filmmakers. Red Rock Micro. Introducing the one man crew. Blackmagic Design pretty much stole the show last year at NAB, and they're set to do the same thing again this year with a couple new announcements. First, we heard about the 6G SDI format. This would be great for 4K workflows and be able to handle lots and lots of data. And in line with that, they also announced their new 4K cinema camera. This is similar to their 2.5K cinema camera they announced last year, similar body design. So those that love it will, and have accessories for it will love it. Those that don't are going to be a little frustrated wishing that there was a little bit more of a traditional camera form factor. Uh, but they also announced this completely new pocket cinema camera. This is similar to the si size of a, a mirrorless camera that you might be used to, like an NEX camera um, or something small like a cell phone. Uh, but it has the same 13-stop dynamic range as their other cinema camera. So if you want to get even more portable, you've got that option. Keeping with their tradition, they kept both of these new cameras at a very, very affordable price point. $4,000 for 4K and the Pocket Cinema camera, which is 1080p HD for only $1,000. These are great price points, definitely something to look for. The 4K camera has a super 35 millimeter sensor, so those that have been wishing for a better sensor are gonna have it this time around. It has an EOS mount to use with Canon lenses, the Pocket Cinema camera has a super 16 millimeter sensor. Now this is going to be a major crop factor from traditional lenses, but it's designed to use with micro four third lens mounts. So if you have that system already, or you've got any of those lenses, which do favor a more wide angle range, you're going to be able to work with that. It's definitely a great camera to be looking at, and it may be something that we're going to see a lot of more. Stay tuned, because we're going to have a full interview with Blackmagic later this week. As long as he gets us to the camera. So we've got the whole live production workflow going on, we've got a post-production workflow going on. What we really needed was a 4K camera, so we've got a nice new camera this year. It's in the same body as the last year, so we can use all the same accessories. There's so many accessories that have been done for the camera, it's been exciting. Um, but it's got a, a, a full 30, Super 35 mil uh, size sensor, and it's a gorgeous shot. And it's really nice, and the picture's coming out of it are really beautiful. Not quite the same contrast range as the current camera, but it's a really nice contrast range and a very nice look. It's a very clean, nice looking sensor. It's EF now because the sensor itself is way too big for Micro Four Thirds. So you just literally can't use a Micro Four Thirds mount version of using EF. Let's use a lot of really nice low cost lenses. Plus you can get ZEISS lenses and everything with EF mount on the back so you can run, run those. So you can run all the cine lenses and all the rigs, all our small lenses. It's got six big SDI outs, and those cameras feed the switches directly, and you get a whole ultra HD workflow. So it's a nice big sensor in the front, it's quite hard, so you get the depth of field, um, and you get, you know, motion is, is different with the global shutter. It's the same connectors on the side, same front of all, the six gig SDI connection, exactly the same size chassis. So obviously the last thing we've got is, so the last year we introduced this camera, and this is the marketing one we used for it. It's a digital, you know, um, Film camera with a wide 30 soft on the range for film book. And it's been awesome. And obviously, we had some supply issues once we started production. We hit our production deadline and we started production and found obviously that the sense of manufacturing had some quality issues and we lost five months in that. We got that sorted out. As you can see, what happened to Boeing it happens. It's unfortunate and it's annoying when this happens, but we worked pretty hard to get it going. We've shipped thousands of cameras now and everyone's been really happy with them. It's actually been fun to see people in the booth with our camera filming our other cameras, which is kind of really cool. Um, but what we wanted to do is, the funny thing about this product is it's, it's small for a cinema camera, but it's kind of big. I took it out to film the family, because I'm like, hey, I would like to film the kids in cinema kind of quality, so I'll take the camera out. But I found it was just bulky. It felt like it was going to take care of the camera more than the kids. So we started thinking, well, it would be great if we can make an even smaller camera. You know, a small camera can be small. A big camera can't be small, but a small camera can be bigger. So what can we do? So we come up with this. So what we've got is a Super 16 digital film camera, but we've packed it in the most incredibly small size that's usable. It's much, much smaller than the camera camera, the bigger camera. It's a HD sensor, so it's not quite as sharp as the uh, 12K cinema camera, but the images are so similar, it's amazing. I mean, the dynamic range is the same. It's a Super 16 sensor size, so if you put a Super 16 cine lens on there, it actually shoots exactly the same as Super 16 film, but we've used a microphone that's lens mount, because it's just much more range of affordable lenses, plus smaller lenses too. It's really tiny. 
it's literally like a point and shoot camera. It's got a nice big handle on the side so you can grab it properly. And, uh, it's really tiny. It's, it's a beautiful little camera. It's funny, you've got to grab one and hold it before you really realise how nice it is. You can see the difference in sizes between the old camera and the new one. So it's been a lot of fun to work on. We've learned a lot building this. It's actually very much feel like exercising and getting better at something because you work hard. This thing has taught us so much. It's the board inside like origami folding around itself. It's incredible. But it really is a full digital super camera in there. It's amazing. All the menus on the back of the course an SD card, we're recording programs, and a lossless version of uh, Super DMG. Which is not very common, the lossless version of seen in Super DMG. It's mildly compressed, but it's a lossless compression mathematically. So it's the same as raw, but we can get raw down with the SD card, which is great. Now we're going to add some more flooding dimensions, so it should be easier. Um, got all the same menus on the back. It's the same resolution screen as the current camera. You can see the sensor size in the front. It's a bit hard to see. You can see the whole guy there. You can see in the front top here is the Super 16 size uh, sensor. Uh, very, very high quality, wide on the frame. Really nice. It's an active mount so you can control small lenses. Beautiful screen on the back. It's really nice to focus with. It's so sharp. It's the same resolution as the new camera, so it's good. All the connections on the side are, are sort of there. They're different connections. We've got remote controls. You can remotely locate the camera. Microphone, headphones. Um, the microphone is the same as the camera cord style microphone. You can plug five all those kinds of mics in and all that. So it's a micro HDMI on the side, but it's got all the overlays that the bigger camera has. So you can plug it a one set monitor. It looks the same. And of course, power. And the removable battery, that's a Nikon style battery. It's a common sort of Scar growing battery available for lots of different people, so we're using that. Get about 60 minutes of power in the battery and pop it out. The uh, SD card goes in the bottom. So, obviously, that uh, contrast range test that we love to do, we love this building if you go and do that contrast range test. It's all white inside with big windows and so it's very. That's a DSLR camera. That's ours. So, you can see how it's captured all the view out the window. I was using the camera for Christmas morning to film with the kids and look at the same windows. And out through I had all the light out in the yard, plus I had everything inside the room. It was pretty dark in the room. I pulled out the camera to take a photo, I thought we couldn't do it even on HDR mode. So it really is an amazing dynamic range, it's so filmy. Which is why I think it's so nice to use this camera personally. As film students can use it, but you know, it's nice just to use it as a personal camera for people from the video industry. And then you can color grade the shot and really give it whatever look you want. You can pick all your point, you know, points to where you want to do it. So it really is quite a dramatic difference, and not only it be much sharper, because the compression is high quality progress, it's not raw, it's not a heavy, heavy compression, it's a very wide, very professional compression. But also it's got all that dynamic range, you've got so much control, which is really what we want in the future so you can get the best out of your images. And it can be big. This can be a big camera. And if you look at the front of the booth, we actually have a giant lens on the camera. That's the great thing about it. I mean, it doesn't have to be small. It can be small, but it can also be big. A big camera can't be small, but a small camera can be big. So it's yeah, we've taken shots for that, and you can just put pretty much any glass on the bottom. You can put uh, yeah, all kinds of rigs. I mean, it really is a very flexible design. So it's great that it's small because it's great for handheld, but it's also got a lot of flexibility. You can turn it into other shapes depending on how you rig it up. You've got little steady cam type arrangements, all kinds of interesting variations. I was really quite surprised last year how, how many third party yeah, vendors are able to make all kinds of exciting camera accessories. And it's been really a lot of fun to work with. A lot of their products are fun to do this year. A lot of choice. And of course the Super 16 City lenses. So you dust off the old Super 16 little lens and use them and they actually work the same way as what they did on the Super 16 camera. You know, the framing, everything's basically the same. It feels very much like it would have felt when you're shooting on a Super 16 film camera. The dynamic range, the way the lens works, all the same. It'll be available in July for 905. Um, so it'll be exciting. I think it'll be fun. Hopefully everyone grabs that buys one and we can all film the whole world in film quality. I mean, I don't even know what's going to happen with this camera. People are going to use it things we haven't even dreamt of. The current camera's been like that. I think this one's going to be the same. We, we, you know, we're thinking that you could take one into dangerous environments like war zones or even protest marches or just general things and capture a sort of film quality instead of being that, that video book. This is a real film book, so I think it'll be very exciting. Subscribe to Next Wave TV, where filmmakers get educated.